Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to North Shore Live Cooper's Corner. We're live this evening. This is November the 6th, 2019. And uh, the weather is a little chilly up here uh, on the North Shore. Uh, and uh, and I, think, I think I heard that it's supposed to snow. But whatever, uh, j just dress warmly and uh, be watchful and careful. Uh, that uh, you're able to uh, see clearly um, um, while your windshield wipers are doing the job they're supposed to do. Uh, as I promised you uh, last week when we had uh, Sergeant George uh, Gardera on, um, uh, uh, he, um, he's going to come on this week. And sure enough, he is on again, which is very necessary because the weather is changing and uh, he is a veteran and uh, he helps out the other vets and their families and uh, if you have any clothes donations <coughs> uh, we uh, uh, have we are giving uh, to uh, the uh, veterans uh, closet and whatever uh, this is the time to be helpful so that others out there can be warm and safe. And uh, I thought I should even ask how your Halloween was, because there was so much snow on the ground. All the candy that we bought for the kids to come, I mean, they couldn't get through the streets because of all the snow. It was incredible. Yeah. I mean, you know, so we ate the candy. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't go to a total sure, loss, no. you know. So anyway, well, without any further ado, uh, let me introduce uh, Sergeant George Gandera, and um, that uh, he uh, is a veteran uh, from Viet it's Viet Vietnam. No, 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 uh, Desert Storm, Desert Shield. Desert yeah. Storm, Desert yeah. Shield. All right, so he's younger than, than I thought, which is good. <laughs> anyway, uh, and he will explain everything that you need to know to be helpful to uh, the community and veterans, and also be very kindly because um, you know these are our warriors, our patriots, our heroes uh, that uh, went overseas to be able to fight for our freedom and other countries' freedoms, the people, and uh, they shouldn't be forgotten or ever uh, out of thought. And uh, as you'll be able to see this flag here, uh, with the two uh, blue stars. Uh, I have one son that is Army and one son that is Navy. And uh, this uh, was brought to me by uh, Barbara Ziegenweid, who was kind enough uh, to bring that up. Um, and I'm so happy and thankful that she did that. So, Sergeant George, I'm sorry I took all your time. Go ahead. The people need to know what they can do to help our warriors, our veterans, mm -hmm. our patriots at this time of year. And seeing that next week is Veterans Day, uh, November the 11th, they should help. Uh, and not think that it's only once a year, but, you know, uh, they should do this continually. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, I'm here to tell you about a uh, program that we have going right now. It's the uh, 2019 Lake County Law Enforcement uh, Veterans Code Tribe. Uh, this program has been going on, f I believe, since uh, maybe nine years ago. I just got involved with this uh, the last past three years. I'm the uh, chairperson for uh, to help the Lake County Sheriff's Department in uh, sponsoring this event. Uh, it started this September 16th and it will go till November 22nd. Uh, what we do is uh, we put uh, collection boxes out at all the local uh, police departments and the lobbies, and these will be the uh, drop-off points. You know. uh, if you don't mind, I'll read you some sure, of the no, spots here. Sure, no, with pleasure. Uh, the first one is, of course, the Lake County Sheriff's Office, and that's located at 25 South Martin Luther King Drive in Waukegan, Illinois. Once again, Lake County Sheriff's Office, uh, 25 South Martin Luther King Drive in Waukegan. And then we have the Lake County Sheriff's Office 
at 1301 North Milwaukee Avenue in Libertyville. All right, uh, 1301 North Milwaukee Avenue in Libertyville, Illinois. Then we have the Lake County State's Attorney's Office at 18 North County Street in Waukegan. County, sure. Yes, ma'am. Lake County State's Attorney's Office, 18 North County Street in Waukegan. And we also have a drop-off box at the Lake County Coroner's Office, 26 North Martin Luther King Drive, again in Waukegan. Uh, Lake County Coroner's Office, 26 North Martin Luther King Drive uh, in Milwaukee. All right, we also have a uh, box at the Bannockburn Police Department, 2275 Telegraph Road in Bannockburn. Once again, Bannockburn Police Department, 2275 Telegraph Road in Bannockburn. And we have another box at uh, the Burrington Police Department. Burrington Police Department located at 400 North, Northwest Highway in Burrington. And that's 400 North, Northwest Highway in Burrington. And a little closer, we have uh, Deerfield Police Department. There's a box there, too, at 850 Waukegan Road in Deerfield. Deerfield Police Department, 850 Waukegan Road in Deerfield. And uh, one at Gurney Police Department at 100 North O'Plain Road in Gurney. All right, so that's 100 North O'Plain Road in Gurney. We have another box at Hawthorne Woods Police Department, 2 Lagoon Drive in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. Again, that's Hawthorne Woods Police Department, 2 Lagoon Drive, Hawthorne Woods. Then, of course, we have Highland Park here, Highland Park Police Department, 1677 Old Deerfield Road in Highland Park. We have a drop-off box in the lobby there. Also, uh, Lake Villa Police Department, that's located at 65 Cedar Avenue in Lake Villa. Uh, we have also Libertyville Police Department, that's at 200 East Cook Street in Libertyville. We have the Mundelein Police Department, uh, 221 North Lake Street in Mundelein. Once again, that's 221 North Lake Street in Mundelein. Uh, we also have a collection box at the Round Lake Park Police Department at 215 East Main Street in Round Lake Park. We have another box at Vernon Hills Police Department, and that's located at 754 Lakeview Parkway in Vernon Hills. And then we also have one more box at the Winthorpe Harbor Police Department at 830 Sheridan Road in Winthorpe Harbor, Illinois. I'm going to show you the flyer, what it looks like. These, uh, oh, there you go, there you go. There you go. These flyers are taped to the boxes on all sides. And they're basically a cardboard box about maybe uh, three, and a, three, three by three uh, cardboard boxes. And these it will be marked with these signs on them. Like I said, you just go there and drop them off. Uh, then when November 22nd comes along, um, what we do is uh, if the police department can, they will deliver them to the Midwest Veterans Closet, or I will come and be called and I'll come pick them up. Now, uh, the Midwest Veterans Closet is uh, located at 2323 uh, Green Bay Road in North Chicago, Illinois. Uh, this is an organization set up by uh, Mary Carmody. Uh, Mary Carmody has been uh, involved with this project for about, I believe, six years. And they first started out in the back of a, uh, uh, this, uh, a trailer, a small uh, mm. trailer, I, like the kind you haul motorcycles in, you know? Yeah. And they started their Midwest Veterans Closet out of that. And, and now, you know, they have a big area at that address. Uh, I believe they will be getting a newer, bigger facility uh, because what happened was uh, this area was only, uh, they only had the, the, you know, the closet where there's all these coats and all these uh, suits and both uh, clothing for men and women, uh, shoes, socks, you know, underwear. Uh, and we also had a food pantry there and a uh, office area where uh, what we do is we try to not only help homeless veterans, but veterans that are transitioning out of the military. Uh, there's an area there where we can uh, train uh, them to uh, write new resumes, you know, and uh, you know, get out there in the community and uh, you know, look for jobs. Get, get back into society. Yes, exactly. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Exactly. So that facility is there. But however, like I said, I believe they'll be getting a bigger facility uh, somewhere down the road. It still will be, I believe, in North Chicago. But like I said, if you can, if you can get contact with Mary Carmody, 
I'm sure she will be able to give you that new information. Uh, like I said, uh, of course, this uh, program that we have here only is from uh, September 16th till November 22nd. However, um, if you would like, uh, we do take donations, you know, year round because unfortunately, uh, you know, there is a big uh, homeless People population need, yeah. also. You know, it's a shame because mm -hmm. I, you know, mm -hmm. as a police officer, I, you know, when I'm on the streets patrolling in Chicago, I'm um, with Homeland Security, you know, I, I've seen so many, I'm, I was surprised to find so many homeless veterans, yes. veterans and uh, both female and male. And sometimes, you know, you, they, you know they, they have their kids with them living out of cars. And, you know, I just, I, I was, just felt compelled to do something. But uh, what happened was uh, uh, my wife passed away and uh, I couldn't let go of, you know, her clothes, and then my mother passed away, so Ugh. I was going in a dark place, but uh, yeah. at the uh, North, uh, the level uh, North Chicago VA, uh, I got in a program there with Dr. John Patrick Beer, John and uh, Beer. they were able to direct me to the Midwest Breton's Closet, because they, they knew my wife and, you know, my family, so they were like, hey, you know, maybe you could take the clothes Help. over there and, you know. You're helping and, someone and, else. Yes, exactly, and helping. they knew how my, you know, my mother and my wife was, so. Yeah. Uh, I went there and I, I was like, oh, wow, this is great. So Mary actually gave me the inspiration to uh, get out there and, uh, you know, help the veterans in the community. Help. Like it's one hand helping the other. Yes, ma'am. Everybody is connected, George. Everybody. Yeah, we are. We're all Everybody related. is brothers, sisters, mm -hmm. some to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily by a bloodline, but by humanities line. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And so we need to help each other. Definitely. Please don't ever forget the veterans, our warriors, uh, our patriots, and uh, do whatever you can do to help them. Um, uh, and uh, I know that um, Denny's has uh, breakfast uh, on uh, November the 11th from 6 until 12, I think. Uh, for veterans to come in and uh, uh, if you have a, a DOD card or whatever to show, so that would be good. Uh, what else can people do? I mean, donations are wonderful, and you can take them all year round. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, we're open from uh, <clears throat> 9 o'clock in the morning till about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So, uh, any, and it, yeah, during any time, uh, we have a staff there, all volunteers, and uh, there's always someone there. You can just come up and, you know, we have a area where the coats go, you know, the clothing goes, the boots and socks. And, and oh, we also take, uh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, we also take uh, dishes, pots and pans. For house houses. Yes, because I said, yeah, what, what happens is a lot of the uh, veterans that we help, you know, of course they're homeless, they go to the VA and then they uh, go there through certain programs and then they move them into apartments or houses. House, okay. So when they transition also out of the military, they don't have anything you know, no to dishes, use. No dishes, right. pots, so pans, glasses. So what we do is we provide all that okay. for free, and everything is goes free. to free for the veterans. Good. They just got to show a DD-214 or a yeah. VA uh, you know, card. Uh, you know, military. And, uh, yes. Something to show that yeah. they were in the military. They were in the military, military. Yeah. Discharge. Yeah. That, and then we, uh, you know, yeah, we help them out with that. So that's, you know. That's wonderful. Yeah. And because, I mean, um, I, when I'm going to give you this large donation, yes, yeah. I want to make sure nobody has to pay for it. No, I'm no. giving this stuff, uh, it's new stuff, whatever, but I don't want the veterans to have to pay for it. No, well, that's so, Mary's idea, and also, you know, a lot of veterans feel that way is, uh, you know, when a veteran, well, when, when somebody joins the military, I mean, you know, when they take that oath, you know, and sign the papers, you know, what we're doing is we're signing a blank check, you know, and that blank check may sometimes perhaps cost an arm, See? a leg, you know, an eye, your eyesight, you know, and uh, we feel that, you know, some veterans have given so much that, How could uh, you, you know, possibly repay? that we, we just owe it to them to yeah. help them out I, and say, yeah, hey, look, I, you know what, you've, you've done your duty and and given more than absolutely I, I don't want any veteran to have to pay for anything I mm -hmm. I'm a mother of veterans yes, and uh, uh, I would feel the same way uh, I mm -hmm. uh, you know what if they don't have or can't afford and if they this is opportunity for them to have a warm coat 
or, or boots or mm -hmm. shoes or gloves or mm -hmm. a hat or a muffler or something. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for, for them. This is yes, for them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that would, uh, but I want this to be known that all year round, yes, all year mm -hmm. around, yeah. uh, this should be thoughtful mm -hmm. and uh, giving, mm -hmm. uh, not just because it's a holiday. Mm -hmm. And then again, now we've got the holidays on yes, us. So we've got, you know, families that are yes. living outside, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, husbands, wives that are, uh, either are one or both military mm -hmm. and they've got children maybe uh, two or three or four children and they have to live under a bridge or whatever when i saw that in lake forest i was i was devastated mm -hmm. i just was devastated you know cars going overhead nobody knows they're there yeah. you know with a mattress a little mm -hmm. uh, baby tyke you know tricycles and stuff mm -hmm. nobody knows they're there but i turned my head and i saw that in my I just, my heart just broke. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to feel that way. Mm -hmm. When you've lived through an experience of living in a car, um, and uh, unfortunately we did, mm -hmm. uh, when I was younger, our, our uh, apartment uh, was, uh, building was on fire and mm -hmm. we had nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. We had to live uh, on the street in a That's car. Yeah. There were five of us living in there and it was dead of winter. It was the coldest day of the year. We were written up in the, in the Tribune three, uh, three times, morning, afternoon, and evening. Mm -hmm. I know what that feeling is like. Yes, I mean, I've been through that. So mm -hmm. this is not just, you know, um, you know somebody from uh, the northern suburbs uh, uh, going to do an act of kindness. This is real mm -hmm. life experience. So uh, I'm sure there are others out there that have experienced some unfortunate tragedy or mm -hmm. being uh, removed from their home due to you know whatever tragedy has transpired mm -hmm. uh, so you would understand this but a child it's so difficult I was just a little kid uh, you know to be carried out by a fireman be, sure, you know yeah. why how yeah, yeah. Uh, smoke uh, uh, terrible it, it was really traumatic mm -hmm. more than I could say Yes, um, but my uh, schoolmates were very kindly to me and my teacher uh, at that time uh, in Chicago school. Um, I came home, told the children in the class, and um, they provided me every day. I went home with two shopping bags of clothing. I mean, it was their clothing, uh, yeah. but that they were kind enough. That sure. kindness yeah. even showed then. So mm -hmm. if someone shows you a kindness, please show someone else a kindness and i didn't have to pay for anything we certainly couldn't afford anything mm -hmm. but uh, i'm you know repaying 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 as much as i can whenever i can mm -hmm. and you know it's good that you can do it when you can do it and when you can't uh, do whatever you can do uh, you know doesn't necessarily mean financial all the time but you know mm -hmm. uh something uh, that you can do maybe help in the soup kitchens that would mm -hmm. be good sure that would be good yeah I always needed volunteers in the food pantries and uh, some of the shelters yeah you can go online I think you can go on maybe look up the uh, Lake County uh, Homeless Coalition uh, right now I'm working with uh, uh, Lon Hodge he's uh, director of uh, Operation Fetch and what we do is we actually go boots on the ground he goes to the different campsites and you know finds the people out there and of course you know we work more with veterans but but normally also you know uh, Anyone, veterans, yeah. uh, because you know a lot of the veterans you know uh, you know we've experienced some things that uh, unfortunately uh, some of us can't really cope so we can't get, you know we're not ready to get back into society we can't it's, make it's that an transfer emotional, it's an, and there's a lot of things that you know you see out there sure. so what we do is we go out there boots in the ground we find where these people are and uh, we actually you know try to you know feed them take care of them uh bring them into uh you know some of these shelters and get them uh, food vouchers and maybe uh, uh vouchers to stay in the hotels i know that a lot of the lake county uh sheriffs now uh carry uh vouchers if they find a family out there you know they'll be able to put them up for the night and then you know they'll follow up and then send them to the uh correct uh 
agencies to help them. Whatever paperwork is necessary. Yeah, Whatever yeah, paperwork yeah, is necessary. Yeah. So it's a very serious problem out there. I mean, like I said, a lot of people don't really know. And, you know, like I said, a lot of times, you know, you know, I mean, a lot of them may be embarrassed or, you know, just feel so bad that, you know, they don't want to ask for help. So, you know, they shun society. But like I said, mostly people like us, you know, we go out there, we tell them, hey, you know, don't, don't do that. Because like you said, a lot of us have experienced such things. That's so right. We can That's understand right. that, you know. That's right. Uh, and th there's no shame in uh, in this. And well, like, you know, a lot of people we need to let the people know. A lot of know. people fall on hard times, and whatever reasons, you know. I mean, we've had a a young lady and her uh, daughter that we discovered living out of a car, and uh, once we found out that it was actually uh, from a domestic uh, situation, you know, situation, yeah. uh, and she was afraid to go to the shelters because you know she thought that uh, you know the person knew where she was at, so we were able to uh, direct her to uh, uh, Representative Safety, Joyce Mason, yeah. uh, Joy, uh, Representative Joyce Mason, and we were able to find her a safe house, and she's going to be there for 30 days, so, you know, oh, get, she's going to get a job, and so that's, you know, one successful that's good. story. That's a success story, yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, There's quite a few out there, but yeah. You know. Absolutely. Uh, now, um, what can people do? They think that maybe they're just going to give... Uh, a winter coat or some boots or gloves or something but what if they'd like to get more involved what could they do well uh, like I said if they go or contact the uh, Midwest Veterans Closet and that's another thing too I mean you know sure we take uh, clothing and uh, you know household appliances but uh, you know you can also write a check maybe you know <laughs> and make it out to the Midwest Veterans Closet or they can you know, go there and volunteer their time because we always need volunteers you know most volunteers. of the people that are there are actually, uh, you know, a little older, and uh, you know they don't move so much, you know, Quickly. or can't or can't lift a lot. Yeah. So, and you know, most of the younger people are working, so uh, you know, but we're always looking for volunteers. You know, but if they go there exactly, uh, you can look it up. Uh, the Midwest Veterans Closet has their own uh, Facebook page, okay. and uh, you can get information from that. Well, uh, it, it's good to uh, if you've got some time on your hands. Mm -hmm. and you'd like to help out, this is a good organization. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and uh, perhaps there was someone in their family that they, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what was a veteran, and they would like to help out. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. So Sure, um, sure, yeah. Uh, I believe uh, the last time uh, I was with the, uh, uh, with the count, I, I believe in the beginning they were, like, helping uh, 50 veterans a month. That was, like I said, going back six years ago. Uh, the last time, though, that I uh, was there, I believe they were handling up to 375 veterans a month. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like I, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This and like, is new information. Yes, and like I said, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's not only homeless veterans. And, you know, because a lot of veterans, I mean, you know, some of them either are disabled or, uh, you know, they're on a limited income or they can't work for whatever reason. And... I guess that's why we're getting more uh, veterans to come in there. And, and, and like I said, it's a shame because, you know, you know, you would think, well, veterans, you know, they should be taken care of. And, that's right. They but, should be taken care of. a lot of them are, you know, like I said, whatever the reason is, they're down on their luck or something happens. They can always come there, like I said, Monday through Friday. You know, they can get food and they can get clothing, you know, and it's all free. That's very important. You're all year round. That's very, very important. Very important. Yes, um, so... Household goods as mm -hmm. well. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, pots, pans, dishes, uh, linens, linens, towels. towels. And what else? Oh, towels, you know. okay. And yeah, nice. Sports, so you know. yeah, uh, silverware. You yes, know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, okay. So let's say that you uh, don't have any uh, clothes or coats or whatever, but you've got blankets or you've yes, got. Dishes, or yes, mm -hmm. you want to change your dishes, or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and they are happy to take dishes, mm -hmm. pots, pans, mm -hmm. glasses, silverware, yes, mm -hmm. um, what uh, dish towels, uh, mm -hmm. whatever. How about uh, soap or uh, you know laundry detergent? Yeah, yeah. Stuff yeah. Like well, that. yeah. Well, like I said, we have the food pantry, and we also, you know, take the non-perishable items. But I believe, uh, you know, sometimes we get people that will bring in, you know, the, the tied boxes. Big boxes, or okay. Or diapers. We, we oh, diapers. diapers. And baby clothes. And also uh, clothing for different size children. Boots, 
uh, well, now that it's winter, of course, boots, hats, yep. gloves, scarves, uh, you know, long underwear, uh, not only for kids, but male and female also. Yep. Socks, very important, warm socks. Uh, and then again, like I said, it's year round, so baby clothes are always accepted and children's clothing. Yeah, I forgot diapers. You brought that yes, up. That's yeah, yeah. wonderful That's because uh, a lot of these families, yeah. the they feel that they didn't, they don't mm -hmm. want to interfere, or they they're too ashamed or yeah. too mm -hmm. embarrassed. They should yes. not. They yeah. should not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, they speak up and tell everybody mm -hmm. what you need. Yeah. We're there to help them. Mm -hmm. How do we get that point across, uh, George? How do we do that to let the veterans know that we're there for them? Well, well you know, it's. I mean, you know, there is social media nowadays, but a lot of the, uh, a lot of it gets through the veteran community by word of mouth. You know, and that's another reason why I believe Murray set this uh, Midwest Veterans Closet uh, organization up is because, number one, it's you know a lot of veterans. I mean, you know. Not only is it hard for them to ask for help, but I mean, you know, they were in command of, you know, soldiers, Marines. You know, they're used to uh, being in charge and, and being in control and, 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 and taking care of Others, their people. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, million dollars of pieces of equipment and oh, arms. Sure. You know, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like they're, they're stuck there and they're like, you know, it's hard for them to ask for help because it's like they're used to being in charge. So what she did was, I think, I, I believe what the, what, what this process is like, we're able to get the word out there by word of mouth nine times out of ten, but it's also to tell them, hey, you know what? This is a friendly area. Yeah. You're among veterans. Yeah. And you're among people who are here. Really, they want to help you. No questions asked. You know. However, if you want to continue some of the programs, yeah, we're there to help you. But uh, it's so open and friendly, and and we act, we welcome them in, and we tell them, you know, hey. Not, you know, you know. Some people will tell you thank you for your service, but here we show them. You know, hey, thank you for your service. Come in, and we're going to help you. We're going to take care of you. you know, what do you, you get back on What your feet. do you need? What can I do for you? See, yeah, that's right, right. the best yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the they don't part. have to feel ashamed. You know, no, you know. there is no shame in this. They were yeah. out to well, fight in a war. Yeah, well, some people do, though. I mean, you know, you know, I've had to ask for help, and it's very hard to, you know. I know, yeah. I know, to ask for help. Yeah. Well. I can tell you, I didn't ask for any mm, help, sure. and they get, came yeah. with with that. I was overwhelmed, and as a an eight year old or a nine year old, it was mm -hmm. just stunning that people thought enough sure, yeah. that they would do that. Because yeah. these little kids went home and told their mother. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's a girl in my class, and did she? There was a fire in her apartment, and you know yeah, they were yeah. burned out and live in a street, yeah. and, and yeah. people. I mean. When you have to take from the Red Cross, mm -hmm. and you're only allotted so much right, money to right. buy, yes. shoes, mm -hmm. coat, a dress, whatever, $13, that's all that was allotted. Yeah. And my uncle said, how can I buy her anything with, mm -hmm. you know, sure. $13? It's shoes, a coat, mm -hmm. uh, so they, uh, he bought me, a, you know, from the money that was allotted from the Red Cross, mm -hmm. uh, a boy's coat. I yeah. mean, I remember mm -hmm. that coat, you know, this stuff gets, you know, burned in your memory. You never yeah, sure. forget that. Oh yeah. And these terrible looking shoes, but there was I had nothing. Yeah. It was the middle of the night, you know, sure, twelve yeah. o'clock, one yeah. o'clock in the yeah. morning. Uh and to be carried out by a fireman. Mm -hmm. And um uh the a green polka dot dress, you know, mm -hmm. that's it was winter, December. Yeah. It was so terrible cold. Yeah, sure. So cold, George that when the fire department went to open up the hydrant to attach the hoses mm -hmm. to put, get the fire, the water froze. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it just came out like that mm -hmm. and it froze. Mm -hmm. That's cold. Sure. That yeah. is yeah. cold. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. and, I, and that's why now, you know, we put an emphasis on giving the uh, warm clothing and coats out because like you said, there's people out here that are, I mean, they're fighting for their survival. And, that's right. And unfortunately, some people do, uh, do die out there so oh that's terrible you know. that's terrible i don't like to hear that i mean i want to help everyone give yeah. assistance to everyone mm -hmm. this uh, silly stuff that's going on in washington i mean let's do something for the people that need help mm -hmm. and stop uh, you know playing games here sure uh, yeah. uh, and uh, the, the veterans the military everybody mm -hmm. needs help yeah. and even yeah. if they're <clears throat> not veterans sure, they yeah. still need help yeah we have veterans and citizens out there yeah. for survival uh, you know 
uh, everybody at some time in their life falls on hard times. Yes, ma'am. Either by being a child or older or mm -hmm. whatever. And to, if you can give, please do. Please help. Uh, we ask you uh, with the most compassion in your heart to please help as many people as you can. Not only is this the season of thankfulness and giving, Thanksgiving is but two weeks away, uh, and Christmas is, my goodness, maybe five weeks away, yeah. but uh, it should be all year round. Do what you can mm -hmm. do to help. Uh, people <clears throat> need the assistance because then they can lift their hands and help someone else. It's a hand up, not mm -hmm. a hand out. So if you mm -hmm. can extend your hand to help someone out uh, from their dilemma that they're cold or not uh, having food to eat, please do so. Um, and if you need to know how to do this, contact uh, the Midwest, uh, what is it, Veterans? Mid Midwest Veterans Closet. Midwest, Midwest Veterans, Veterans Closet, Closet of North Chicago. Of North Chicago. They can give you direction. Yeah. And if you want to assist and be a volunteer, that's even better yet. We want to get the word out. This program is keyed to community. It's keyed to humanity. It's keyed to making people uh, be see other people in a better light. Uh, than perhaps what they are used to, and that everybody needs some help at some point. Yes, ma'am. So um, uh, you don't have a phone number or anything that they could call. Is there anything that... Well, if, if you Google it, it'll come up. Midwest, come up. Google Midwest Veterans Closet. All the information will come up. The email address, the phone numbers, uh, the time uh, that they're open. And then also we have a Facebook page. And, again, and okay. that gives you Maybe all the information. Yeah. Okay. Also, you know, where we're located, where you can make a donation or drop off And if off they clothing. don't have a uh, computer, they could go to a library. Yes. They could go to a library. Or, you know, go to any police station. Uh, police all, station, yeah. okay. We, we all, yeah. uh, a city hall or police station or whatever. And where the coats yeah. are being dropped. Yeah, the po police they, station. Yeah, and the, get the police there. department, they could give direction. All they need to do mm -hmm. is go to the window uh, yes. and mm -hmm. ask... How can I contact these people? Mm -hmm. Can you give me a phone number? I need some help or assistance mm -hmm. with food, clothing, mm -hmm. that there's children involved and that they want, you know, they need help. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, please, please use the uh, facilities that are there for the public, uh, the police department, the city halls, the libraries. Get your information. None of this is... Uh, for uh, financial gain. This is all donated goods, <clears throat> uh, fine goods, brand new goods. Some may be gently used, but good mm -hmm. merchandise. And they will help you, uh, whatever they can do. And if you need some help or assistance, you can you know, contact the uh, Midwest Veterans Closet. Uh, and if you feel comfortable to talk with George, you could leave your name and number or whatever, and George could get back to you. He's a veteran. He understands the situation. Um, and uh, there's uh, uh, the buddy-buddy system mm -hmm. that you could use with that. So um, I, 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 I fear to ask how many tons of clothing you've taken in or coats you've taken in. Well, me personally, uh, I think the first year we started, well, that I got involved with is about five years ago. Uh, the first time, I, just by myself, I collected about 126 coats. But last year, uh, it's close to about 5,000 coats. And also, uh, winter apparel, because a lot of people were donating boots, long underwear, socks, gloves, hats. But, uh, you know, about 5,000 articles. That's so, incredible. Yeah. So every year, and it goes we, to good use, and people yeah. use it. Every year, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. You know, we have such. People up here just got such big hearts up here, you know. And uh, yeah, and like I said, yeah, every it goes a uh, vet. Well, our this one uh, program, you know, like I said, it's, it's primarily for veterans. However, if we do get homeless people, I mean, you know, give them a meal, but we'll direct them to the correct facilities, you know, like PEDS and okay, other yeah. agencies up in uh, or, Lake County or Waukee. All know. right, yeah. Salvation Army, whatever. Yes, I mean, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Catholic yeah. Charities. Yeah, Catholic uh -huh. Charities. Yeah. Yeah. We've had them on the program, yes, so okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, what about um, uh, if they have pets? Uh, do you find? Uh, well, uh, I know that uh, sometimes during a year we'll have a uh, like a pet coat drive or a pet drive where uh, we get word out to the community where you know they can bring leashes, uh, you know the the little coat vests, little sweaters, booties, yeah, yeah. and sweaters, dog food. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, you know. So that's something else. Yes. Because maybe they're um, embarrassed to, to ask for that. Right. Um, and so. Well, like I said, the, the one thing that's different about us is, you know, because the word gets mostly spread out through veterans. And that's one thing uh, as veterans, you know, we're, we're able, we may not be able to communicate or talk to other people or trust other people, but in the veteran community, once again, since we all serve together, we all trust each other. Nine times out of ten, you know, when you get the word from another person that served, yeah. you know, oh, this is legit. Yeah, check them out. You know, so so uh, they can get a, a dog food or cat food. Yes, from uh -huh. that's yeah. uh, that because yeah. they they wouldn't want to leave their pet. No, no, of course not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, you know, they'll do whatever they can to help them, and if they don't have the resources here at the Midwest Veterans Closet for some reason, I mean, we're not going to just you know we we you know we're trained to, you know as as military people to take care of the situation, and if we can't, then we'll find a solution. Now, people will say, well, they, they see you're wearing your um, uh, your cap, and uh, it says VFW. Well, I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a post commander at the Libertyville Post 8741, so sometimes when I'm on duty, as I say, when I'm helping out veterans, I, I wear the hat also to let them know I'm a veteran. This way, it's a little bit easier for them to approach me. To identify. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. So um, maybe a little bit about your background. How long were you in the military? Uh, I served uh, 23 years in the military. I did three years active duty Marine Corps. I was injured. I got out uh, when the Berks uh, got bombed in Beirut in 83. Uh, I wanted to go back in. Mm. Unfortunately, it wouldn't take me back in because of my injuries. But I was able to join the Army and the Army National Guard where I did 20 years. And I served years. at different, uh, you know, Places, you know. So you were all over the world. Yeah, yeah, with that. I, yeah. I went to Germany. I went to Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, the Philippines, uh, South America, Panama. Wow. Honduras. Yeah. All right. So you were all over. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, from there, then, uh, how did you get into the um, um, law enforcement? How did that happen? Oh well, well, uh, well. It's funny. I, when I went to Marine Corps, I wanted to be. I wanted to be a military police officer, but of course, you know. If you don't sign a correct paper, you know, <laughs> I got I was infantry, and yeah. so yeah. But uh, once infantry. I got out, I I went to uh, you know just sign up for the police department. I was a police yeah. officer, a field training officer. Uh, I'm with the Department of Homeland Security, uh, part of a special response team, and also a police inspector. And the thing is, uh, like I said, you know, when you're patrolling out there, and you know, you just see a lot of more things out there when you're you know boots on the ground, as we were overseas, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I started noticing, wow, you know, was, you know, people, like I said, in dead of winter, freezing. and It's humanity. You know, and also, you know, I would try to direct them to the different uh, agencies in Chicago, you know, yeah. and the warming centers. But like I said, I mean, it, it hit me a little bit harder because, like I said, you know, you know, I had a hard time also transitioning, you know. Uh, I've been diagnosed with PTSD and a few other things, you know, that I didn't know. You know, I, well, I when have you're overseas with, you and know, you see these things, I mean, yeah, these yeah. are things that people normally don't see. Yes, they think mm -hmm. war is over there, and you, you don't go there because that's war. Mm -hmm. But those that volunteer and go to fight for their country, they are over there. Mm -hmm. They see things that you know their mind can't adapt to, um, and then again, bombs and guns and stuff going off. Any least jar of the brain is so difficult because it sets the brain off in a whole nother way. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, well, the thing is, is like, uh, you know, you can't ever forget it. Oh, no, you, know? you don't. So, oh, no. So. You know, some people have a little bit. Everybody's got different uh, tolerance levels. So, and also depending on what you see, you know. Yeah. It's very traumatic. So, you know, it's a little bit harder for some. And it's very it's traumatic. Hard. It's just yeah, hard. Yeah. It's very yeah. traumatic. So you, you know, you, yeah. To take anything like that lightly, uh, yeah. I wouldn't think that anybody would be a human being because yeah. you have to have heart. When you yes, see stuff mm -hmm. like that, oh, yeah. you can. You yeah, can. Yeah, sure. So then you're in a military for 22 or 23 years. I served a total of 23 years. Okay, and, the, and now uh, law enforcement, how long are you in that? Uh, 
well, next year, 30 years. 30 years, wow, okay. So, I mean, you talk from experience, you know yes, what's out there, you know mm -hmm. how other people are and what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you can very well see uh, how tragic the, the life mm -hmm. is. Yeah. What do you think about, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, this, uh, this opioid situation and these kids getting hung up on that? Well, that's, that's another big problem also. I mean, the drugs have been pouring into our country for decades. Yeah. And uh, that's also part of the problem, too, because, you know, you know, bad things happen to good people. I mean, you know, people get hooked up. Uh, they may want to try something. And like I said, you know, in the old days, uh, you know, the problem was first, you know, oil marijuana, then it went to cocaine. Oh, yeah. And then after the cocaine, uh, you know, academic, uh, we had the, uh, you know, crack. And, and you got to remember these uh, cartels and these gang bangers and uh, all these. Oh, how, uh, you tragic. Know, how tragic. How tragic. People, what they're trying to make is they're trying to give a product, but a cheaper product so they can make more money. So then, of course, you know, went to crack cocaine, which is cheaper. And then, of course, heroin is very cheap. And the meth. So what our big problems are now is again, you know, heroin and uh, the meth. You know, and uh, but how do you get these kids off of that? What do you do? I mean, do you well, there's well, that's a different, you know, that's a different situation, you know, area. Yeah. I don't deal with. I mean, we direct them to certain uh, agencies, yeah. you know, and uh, they try to help them. But uh, you know, it, it's really hard because like a lot of, like I said, addiction, any kind of addiction, whether it's smoking, drugs you know, drinking or whatever, you know, yeah. uh, once you're hooked, I mean, it's hard to, to, to give it up. Addiction. It's hard yeah. to break the addiction. Well, what and that's what destroys a lot of the people, not only out there in Savannah, but also military, you know, like what's going on. Uh, oh yeah, the fentanyl, now the fentanyl is oh, coming in, it's being produced right. in China, you know, it comes up through uh, Latin America, you know, you know, it's just a real bad situation. But uh, I was going to make a point, <laughs> I forgot. Well, you know, uh, the, the situation is that, you know, uh, Illinois has uh, legalized that they could uh, use this stuff. That's terrible because when these youngsters are driving in a car and they're 16 years old or whatever, and they're overwhelmed with this drug, you know, they've got a, a two-ton uh, an automobile yeah, that uh, the vehicle and it could you know it take out the one in front the one sure, in yeah. back the yeah. one on yeah. either side or they can overdose yeah and they can overdose yeah. well once again it, it's it, you know it's the fault of the people that are making it you know for a profit and getting out there uh like you said i mean a lot of kids are od and a lot of kids you know they can't you know especially the fentanyl you know if they don't od they have car accidents or you know they go crazy and they yep. just, you know they'll kill somebody yeah you know it's a it's a sad situation we've been fighting it we'll continue to fight it you know you know uh um now at this time of year like i say thanksgiving is about two weeks away mm -hmm. and uh the fact that we see a lot of people out on the street they claim they are veterans mm -hmm. they claim they are veterans mm -hmm. and yet there some are not yes, mm -hmm. some are not and they mm -hmm. want you to donate they have a little jar mm -hmm. or whatever sure, yeah. they want to but how do we know mm -hmm. if they are in fact a veteran or not and that whatever you give them whatever change you give them it doesn't go to food it goes mm -hmm. to buy drugs yes well that's another thing i can tell you about right now uh veterans we can identify each other because you know by, because I guess put it this way, everybody knows where they went to boot camp, everybody knows where they were trained, oh, yeah. everybody knows what unit they were in. And I guarantee you, I've met people from, you know, four years ago till uh, last week when I was talking yeah, to, the, <laughs> to the detective. You know, we're yes. in the same area, you know, oh, here's Desert oh, Storm, yeah. and you know, you start talking, Elvin. and you know, Elvin. so there's always some kind of connection, you know, so if you just question them, but of course you have to be military yourself, you know. To know it. Uh, yeah. we, we call them people posers, and they're posing, you know, as veterans so uh, usually uh, when a veteran talks to another veteran we can find out pretty quick if they're the real deal yeah, but they take the honor of being a veteran yeah well, and that's they stolen disgrace valor. it well, well that's stolen valor that's something else we can spend a whole hour on uh but you got to remember there's evil people out there there's thievery there's people who will deceive just like you know the drug dealers oh, and all they terrible. care about is the themselves money. yeah and, and making, making the money, money you know yeah. and they'll do whatever they have to do and they don't care whose yeah. life get, 
gets ruined by no, it or no. not. I'll tell you what, though. I mean, there are some laws about uh, asking for money. So, I mean, if you do ask, if a person doesn't ask you for money, this is what I would always do. And of course, you know, maybe it's because I'm a police officer. You know, I'd be like, "Well, are you hungry? Because I'll buy you know, I'll, I'll buy, buy you a meal. I'll buy you a meal. Right. Never give money. Never give money. The Never only way give. time you give money or write a check is, of course, to a legitimate agency. agency. And then yeah. even then, though. You have to verify. You have to vet. Yeah, some that are very agency. corrupt. There's people, absolutely. Yeah, there's people out there just like the, you know agencies are like people that are yep. are just taking money. They want to take the money. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I receive all these things in the mail, and you know it touches your heartstrings. Sure. Um, you know, feed them, give oh, yeah, this, yeah. do that, Little whatever. Children, sick yeah. animals. When you or... yeah, when you <laughs> write one check or two checks, mm -hmm. I don't know how they find me. But, you know, everybody sends in this stuff in the mail. Yeah. And, well, you know. Well, they sell your information, you know. I, I, I or they know that you you have a kind. See, I that's what they do. They look for people who have this. kind hearts oh, and are giving, you know. I feel very badly about this, George. Because well, well, like I said. I, we you know, can't give to everybody. Well, we give to who we know we can right. give to. Just always vet who you're giving to and make sure that it's a legitimate organization. It goes to who it goes to. Right. And then, again, if it's a person who is on the street. Do you need some food? food? I will buy you food. And nine times out of ten, I mean, if somebody's hungry, they'll take the food, you know, or can I give you a coat or a blanket, you know? Yeah. But never... Yeah, but never the cash. Yeah, yeah. Never you the know, cash. Unfortunately, yeah, there's a lot of people now, out that's there. That's very smart because, you know, you feel badly they're standing outside. Mm -hmm. But I need to tell you that I look at these people and they don't look like they, number one, well, sure. are, yeah. you know, uh, doing without. Yeah. They've got... Uh, you know, new clothing, new shoes, new whatever, uh, you know, and uh, no. um, he wants, they say they're a vet, but yeah. there's this fellow who's always up there on the bridge uh, across, uh, you know, 41, uh, I think 41. it's uh, by Clavy and whatever, um, and mm. um, I'm, I'm, you know, I want to say something to him, but I figure I don't want to get caught in no, just conversation. Contact a police officer. So uh, I just, uh, you always, know. You can always contact a police officer. You know, and they're, the sign looks like it's laminated. Oh, yeah. I mean, they can laminate these signs. It doesn't say <laughs> starving vet or I'm, yeah. you know, uh, my um, I'm served in the armed forces and... Whatever. Uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of them will go out to the uh, Goodwills and buy the uniform because you know a lot of our guys when they get out in gals, they you know they just you know yeah the, I've got a actually, we don't, we actually, actually we don't donate have uniforms. That's yeah. right. So you get a guy out there, a girl out there who has a uniform, and oh, I'm yeah. a homeless veteran. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, just contact a, a law enforcement officer. They'll go out there and investigate. I didn't know you could do that. That's uh, well, you that's know, some if, new if, information. If, if, well, you know, I mean. It, Maybe they're they're not legal to do that. Well, the, every I, I mean I can I, I can only speak about federal law. I mean every municipality has their own laws about vagrancy or asking for money. Nine times out of ten, you have to go to city hall if you're an organization like the Kiwanis, you know, yeah. Lions, the yeah. DFW, American yeah. Legion, and you have to notify them and say, hey, we're going to be having our uh, oh, annual yeah, coffee too. drive yeah, yeah. or any candy yeah, drive yeah. donut day. Yeah. Or, hey, well, I'm collected for Midwest Veterans Closet, yeah. you know? Oh, okay, and then, all right, you're legit. You just can't go out on the street and say, hi there, I need money. Yeah, but you know? this guy is always there. Call a police officer. And, um, you know, uh, if it was legitimate, um, I, I would venture to say, go ahead. Well, no, well, like I said, I mean, uh, Lake County Sheriff's, like I said, uh, I mean, it's just a welfare check also. You know, if you're driving around, you see somebody who's in need, I mean, I mean, there's no law against saying, hey, do you need some help? Need Can I help you? Are you yeah. homeless? Uh, would you like a meal? Like I said, we have vouchers. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So if it's somebody who's starving, I just, You know, them. I just feel badly because, like I say, I, I'm i the mother of, you know, yeah, I two sons that were overseas, came sure. back. Thank mm -hmm. God they were, you know, uh, they're okay. Yeah. They have all yeah. their parts with them. But mm -hmm. uh, I feel badly that they uh, take the honor uh, of being uh, a, a yeah. veteran, a military I veteran, where you're coming from, yeah. a combat veteran, yeah. and uh, another scam. And it's another scam yeah. on on us, on mm -hmm. uh, on us, on the parents, on the families, on those yeah. who serve. Well, well, on everybody, yeah. But like I told you, there's evil, there's bad people out there. They don't care. 
unfortunately, you know, there's always going to be evil in the world. That's why it's up to us that want to be righteous and help, help. You know, and do the right thing. Yes. You know. Yes. You know. Um, so, uh, because I've, you know, like I say, uh, I feel badly that you sure, know these yeah. people are out there. Yes, ma'am. I, I I hate not to trust. Mm -hmm. See. Not I to trust, yeah. but military, you can trust each other. Yeah. But I hate not to trust someone who says what they yeah, are, and they're not. And they're mm. not, George. You know. Well, like I said, unfortunately, you can't control that. I mean, like, you know, there's good and bad in the world, you know. And it, it doesn't matter to them that they're dishonoring or disgracing. You know, veterans. They're taking advantage. Or people, or normal citizens. Yeah. Taking but advantage. They, but you don't understand them. They're crooks. They're thieves. Thieves. You know, and Good God. That's, that's, they that's, are thieves. That's the way they are. You know? That's who they are. That's you know? their calling. Yeah. They're thieves. They could steal your identity. They mm -hmm. could steal sure. your valor. Yeah. Yeah. They could steal the clothes off your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and still they say they're veterans when in fact they're not. Mm -hmm. So we need to yeah. tell our... Well, that's against the law also. So, you know, it's like I said, stolen valor. Oh, yeah. And also uh, when they're asking for money again, it's like, you know, you're... Your uh, it's you know theft under deception. You know what what you need to do is uh, if you want to converse with them, yeah, well, you ask them mm -hmm. if they are hungry or in need. You're happy to buy them a meal. Yeah, sure. There's Wendy's yeah. or McDonald's or right. whatever or mm -hmm. uh, Denny's. Buy them a meal, whatever. Yeah. Or like I said, if they're veterans, you can always say, hey. There's a place, Midwest Veterans Closet, okay. 2023 Green Bay Road, North Chicago. They'll help you. They'll help you. And if they're real veterans, guess what? They'll go. We'll, yeah, we'll help them. They'll go. Yeah. If they're not, well, they'll go stand on another corner or another bridge somewhere. You know. See. Now, I, and I always taught the kids to, to be helpful to yeah. others. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I know when uh, they were in college, uh, uh, my son would call me and he was in Iowa and he said, uh, there's somebody that's hungry here. I just went to get a pizza. Mm -hmm. He said, I just took one slice. Is it all right if I give him the rest? Mm -hmm. I said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Give him the pizza. Mm -hmm. uh, I, he said, uh, uh, but he's asking for money. I said, no, you cannot give the money, mm -hmm. but you can give the food. And if sure. you're willing to give a pizza that you only took one slice mm -hmm. and he's hungry he will accept yeah. it believe mm -hmm. me yeah. mm -hmm. anyone hungry will accept oh, it definitely yeah. and you did a good deed mm -hmm. and and that's a wonderful right. thing yeah, that's the way it should be yeah. yeah to do a good deed like yeah. that you know unfortunately like I said, there's a lot of bad people out there but i think there's more good people in the world well we would hope that wherever this program is being seen mm -hmm. that uh you can help those that are in need remember uh, a hand up mm -hmm. is not a hand out you're just pulling them out of a bad situation mm -hmm. so they can get themselves uh, with their feet on the ground mm -hmm. and get uh, a better situation. If you have coats, shoes, uh, pants, uh, dresses, socks, uh, underwear, winter it's winter time here now. Anything you can to help would be greatly appreciated. <clears throat> and uh, um, no one will ever turn you away. And you're doing a good, good deed. Um, and uh, if you can volunteer, that's even better yet. Your time will be uh, spent with uh, honor and dignity, uh, helping out those that have served. And uh, perhaps you have someone in your family that uh, is a veteran. <coughs> so you could do that uh, wonderful deed to help out. And everybody is looking to help. Mm -hmm. We don't want anyone to go hungry, George. Yes, we don't want anyone to be cold or left out in the cold, and especially with children. If you know a family, if you see a family or are in uh, aware of a, a veteran and his family or her family, or just someone in need, you can call uh, whatever agency would be appropriate uh, or uh, help uh, by... Well, well, the easiest thing you can do, like I said, is go to your local police department or uh, call the non-emergency number. And uh, nothing wrong with calling and saying, hey, you know what, I believe there's a family or an individual who, you know, seems that they need help. They may look hungry. hungry. And yeah, that's part of our job also. You know, it's called doing a welfare check. You know, and it's part of our job is to check on citizens. Check, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know. 
you, know, you can always do that. I mean, uh, there are organizations mm -hmm. that can help and will help mm -hmm. if you uh, direct these people to them. And yes, it's not uh, uh, a shame or a dishonor to ask for help and assistance. Um, that's what everybody's there for. That's what we're here for. And if you need some assistance, please do contact your local authorities um, and tell them you're a veteran. Even if you contact your police department and say, look, I'm a veteran. I don't know where to go or mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been overseas. I'm combat. I'm, you know, a little distressed or whatever. They can put you uh, in a uh, connection with someone who will deal with veterans. Mm -hmm. And I always ask a hundred million times when people go into a hospital and you have to fill out this form, why don't they have on the form, they've got Mr. and Mrs. and Miss and whatever, uh, but they don't ever have on the form veteran or military service. Yeah. Why don't they have that? Well, I think maybe the reason is because they figure, well, most veterans know about Hey, you got a VA down there, you got a Veterans Administration hospital down there, and they figure, well, they know about it, you know, so maybe that's why they don't ask them. But you'd be surprised, though, in the old days, like when I got out, I mean, you know, people would just say, well, if you need anything, go to the VA. Go to the VA. And nine times out of ten, you know, you'd forget that because you're involved in working or doing that's whatever. Right. <clears throat> and a lot of people, you know, in the old days, they were treated a certain way at the VA, you know, uh, like I said, it's getting a lot better. But there's still some problems there. So some veterans actually don't even want to go to the VA. You know. I know. I know. They're yeah. uh, they're <clears throat> really uh, their yeah. life is in their hands. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a long waiting, but yes. you know yeah. you have to connect with the yeah. right person. Yeah, but on emergency situations, well, it's like any yeah. hospital. They'll, they'll take care of you. They're not going to. They'll take. Know, no, yeah. they won't turn you away. Yeah. They won't turn you. Yeah. Well, uh, let's give uh, you know the uh, information one more time okay. sure. with the. Um, <clears throat> with the uh, Midwest uh, closet, so. Well, like I said, for this time, like I said, through September 16th to November 22nd, the uh, Lake County Law Enforcement Veterans Code Drive have drop-off locations. We have the cardboard boxes with these type of signs on them. That's how you know it's right. legal. Yeah. Okay. And plus it's also in the police department. Okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, so you can drop them off at the Lake County Sheriff's Office at 25 South Martin Luther King Drive in Waukegan. You can drop them off at the Lake County Sheriff's Office, 1301 North Milwaukee Avenue in Libertyville, off of Winchester Road. Uh, Lake County State Attorney's Office at 18 North County Road in Waukegan. Uh, Lake County Coroner's Office, um, 26 North Martin Luther King Avenue in Waukegan. You can drop them off at the Bannockburg Police Department, the Barrington Police Department, uh, Deerfield Police Department, Gurney Police Department, Hawthorne Woods Police Department, Highland Park Police Department, Lake Villa Police Department, Libertyville Police Department, Mundelein Police Department, Round Lake Park Police Department, Vernon Hills Police Department, and Winthorpe Harbor Police Department. Wow. Well, George, thank you so very much for coming on the program. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Appreciate My it. My pleasure always. And please remember to be kind to everybody out there and the veterans need our assistance please be helpful the coat drive uh, food whatever you can do greatly appreciated your volunteerism is greatly appreciated have a pleasant week have a very good evening be careful it's going to be snowing and remember there are those out there that are in need of coats shoes children's wear please be helpful and help them God bless you all. Thank you for watching. See you next week on North Shore Live Cooper's Corner. Have a good evening.